myself Kiran. Uh, I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So, in today's talk, uh, I'll give, uh, I will share our experience uh, in one of the uh, works we have been doing in collaboration with the uh, department. That is on the uh, design and analysis of uh, 3D printed cranial implants. So, if here cranial implant in the sense, cranial defect in the sense it is related to the skull. Okay. So let us say if you have uh, a cranial injury or damage, so immediately uh, uh, no, uh, we go for the uh, cranioplasty. So what is a cranioplasty? It is uh, the, uh, the, the medical way of uh, repairing a bone defect that has been caused due to injury or uh, the previous operations. So, uh, so it goes like this. Uh, let us say if a patient is having a cranial defect, you know, uh, he approaches the doctor and then the doctor will go for the uh, CT scan. Okay, from the CT scan image, you know, the image is being re 3D reconstructed along with the defect. Okay, and that 3D reconstructed uh, details will be given to the, the designer. Okay, the designer who is a specialized designer, okay, related to uh, uh, the implant designs. So uh, he will take that information and try to work around to that to make the implant. So during this process, the designer will take you know, sufficient time depending upon the complexity. He may take one week time or ten days time, okay, depending upon the complexity as well as the uh, um, the schedules. So during this period, because of uh, uh, these delays, sometimes you know the uh, the skull will you know tries to uh, uh, go for some kind of a self healing, okay. Once it has been self healed, what will be the CAD? Details that you know that is being given to the uh, uh, to the designer. If he design based upon that, there is always a chance that you know the implant may get misfit. Okay, and so in our present work, we try to uh, put some effort to minimize this designing time. So this designing time, we try to minimize with the help of you know the uh, the deep learning models. So. Once we get the uh, ca the catheters, you know, we try to use this uh, no, uh, deep learning models in order to uh, no, um, uh, the uh, optimize or come up with the uh, optimized implant. So now, once the design has been done, the next step is we need to select the suitable materials as well as the uh, manufacturing process. So there are various varieties of materials. Uh, so in the present work, we are concentrating on uh, the uh, biocompatible metallic material that is titanium, Tis so the material has been decided. The next thing is the manufacturing process. Again, there are various manufacturing process out of which uh, the you know uh, the present um, uh, you know a widely used process is the 3D printing of the implants. So here we have gone for the uh, 3D printing of the implants. So that is the manufacturing technique that is that is being used. And again, you know in 3D printing there are wide varieties of variants out of which uh, we selected uh, the uh, the selective laser melting, which is a four bed fusion process. So once we get the implant, the design in the form of a steel file, it is being communicated to the machine, and as per the given information, the machine 3D prints the implant. So now here the important thing is, okay, so for example, if I want to uh, manufacture a, a typical uh, no, cranial implant made of titanium of this size, I need to invest up to 50 to 60,000 60, by using the laser melting process. Okay, so if I want to optimize the process parameters for a uh, given implant and for a given material for a selective laser melting process, no, we can't do with the experimentation. Okay, it will be very very expensive as well as a time consuming. So we uh, try to come up with the uh, uh, with the numerical simulation techniques through which you know we try to uh, uh, you know. Uh, simulate the uh, implant manufacturing and try to optimize by using thermo 